In this video, we are diving into an AI-powered scratch mod that can generate real working blocks based on prompts and it can do a lot more. Let's get started. The scratch mod we are exploring today is called Stacks. After logging in with your details, you can open Stacks where you'll be greeted with the familiar scratch layout and inside this mod, you'll come across this AI prompt box where you can type prompts to generate code. So Stacks has 5 main AI features, coding, code editing, Q&A, coach and prop master and we'll explore each of them starting off with coding and testing its limits so let's start really basic here i would say to generate a simple movement script so once you are done typing you can click on this button to submit your prompt after that you need to wait for a few seconds until the ai is done with your coding and once done you can see the processing is complete and voila, you got your code just by writing a prompt. So let's we test it. Yep, that's a simple movement script, all right. So now let's see where they could handle some other cases. Let's go with Amon, why not? So go to a random portion, wait for a second, and then repeat forever. Let's see what the AI does here. Okay, forever, it used the set X and set Y rather than using the random portion. But yeah, it still works. So one thing I want to test out is whether it detects the sprite inside our project. So let's say if touchy Amog, we need to, let's say, do a pull effect. So we are done, processing complete, and oops, looks like it doesn't work. It says, sorry, some error caused during code generation. Please try again with a different prompt. By the looks of it, it can't really detect the sprites associated with the project. So yeah, it would be cool if it could do that, but it looks like it can't. Let's say if touching a sprite, then do a cool effect. Would this work? Processing complete. Again, we got an error block, but this time we got our output. So it says if touching edge, but we don't need the edge. So we can actually pick Amon from here. And yeah, there are arm check errors, I think. Let's pick the green flag. And yeah, it just changes the color effect. Okay, it still does a pretty good job. So next I want to check out is whether it actually handles the operators correctly. So let's say to make a simple calculator. Let's click it. Oh, we got it. We got something. Let's just clean up block. So wow, it generated all of this code. So let's test it. Enter first number, 100. Enter the operation. We could add any operation. Let's say add. Enter the second number, 200. And 100 plus 200 equals 300. And there we go. That's a simple calculator, all right? So as you can see, it did a pretty well job on handling the calculator it just first asked a number and if we don't provide anything it just says to enter a valid number after that it would just ask the operation and if it's not one of the correct operations it would say it's invalid again stops all and again for the second number it just checks whether the answer equals nothing and if it's nothing it stops all pretty well done and uh, one thing I'm really surprised here is also checked whether it's dividing anything by zero, which is undefined, of course. So it checked for that cost too, which actually a lot of people just might ignore when making a basic calculator app. For that, it works really, really well. It has structured its code correctly using the join blocks. And yeah, really well done. So there's also this official documentation which you can use which has a lot of pre-made prompts. So using this you can kind of get an idea on how to structure your prompts so you can effectively get the output. So let's just try a simple one here. Sprite follows the mouse pointer and creates a big ripple effect with changing colors and there we go. So let me just run it and wow that's awesome. So yeah, this is a really great learning opportunity. And also, if you're like stuck with doing animations and stuff, yeah, this could really help you. So let me just copy this whole thing. So wow, that's one heck of a long prompt. Let's copy all. I didn't even bother reading. Let's see what it does. We got this. Okay, I don't think that's the correct thing. Oh, it just, it just moves to a random position. I think it did a mistake somewhere. And yeah, we think a forever loop, it did not add a forever loop. So you can see, although the prompt is really descriptive, the AI still pretty much messes up the whole thing. It completely forgot to add a forever loop. So 
this is the whole thing of AI, you can't really rely on it 100%, it can make mistakes, so it's up to you to figure out where it went wrong, but for now I'll just let this be and I'll be surely coming back because another thing that I want to try is whether it supports extension. So let's start off with a pen extension, let's say to generate a pattern of hexagons using the pen extension, I'll specify that it should use the pen extension, so yeah looks like it actually just worked with the pen, let's just in and yeah that's a cool pattern using hexagons all right so let me test something else as well so create a spiral graph out of hexagons let's try that oh there's an error so change pin <laughs> nothing by five so I think that one works. Let's test it and see. And no, it still does work. So it's actually changing the pen color. So although the block is actually broken here, it still works. So the next extension that I really want to test is the music extension. So let's test it. Create a simple tune using music block. And no, just flashes you with a lot of errors but still it does say the block that it tried to use so in theory you could use this block that it says and generate a simple script and let's just see and yeah that's a simple tune so although the ai still struggles on generating music blocks so you can still use the blocks inside the error and generate actual working code so far we've been using ai to generate new code every single time but now let's switch to code editing as the name suggests this mod helps to refine existing script we got the same movement script again but now we could do some edits using the code editing feature currently the dog doesn't actually switch sides according to the key we press so yeah let's say it to switch sides processing complete and there we go now we got point in direction blocks i think it won't work because yep let's try to say to change directions only when right or left arrow is clicked so again it did change the directions only when we click the right and left arrow but it kind of messed up the moving steps too because now when we click the up arrow it moves right or left depending on the direction you are facing yeah this code does not work properly so it's a really simple code so now let's try to again change it let's say to make the movement script more smooth using velocities okay we got this whole set of blocks let's test it out okay so nothing is really happening we can move and the directions are also correct this time surprise surprise so now let's say i want to make it more smoother all right now i think it made it more smoother and there we go now that's a really smooth movement i love it so it does some hiccups here and there and messes up the whole code but sometimes you could make some really useful code like this like look at this so now let's come back to the code that did not work which was there in the starter prompts so currently i have set it to coding and let's generate this whole set of prompts would it generate the correct one this time no it didn't so now let's try switching to code editing and giving the same prompt so it recognized that those blocks need to change and voila it generate a new set of blocks so now we can see what this prompt actually does let's give it a shot so okay this is a really cool game you need to catch the dog before it shrinks wow to be honest this kind of fun so now you can see the stuff that won't work in coding actually works when you switch to code editing so you will go through the set of blocks identify those set of blocks and then edit those set of blocks which i think is really cool next up we have the q a feature so let's say i don't know what the abs operator means what does the abs operator do inside scratch and then it just spits out all of this information the abs operator in scratch calculates the absolute value of a number and then it tries to give a small explanation takes any number positive or negative as input returns the positive version of that number by removing the negative sign if present and it also gives a small example so you can understand which is again really cool and the Q&A feature also shows you some places where this operator can come in handy calculating distance between sprite ensuring values stay positive working with speed blah 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 really really cool so another feature that the Q&A can do is debugging so I got this simple 
simple script, so I'm intentionally setting this move block to run without screen refresh, so it just moves almost instantly. So yeah, let's just ask and see what's wrong in my code. All right, there we go. Custom block definition. Okay, so board sprite have custom blocks name defined. Okay, so that's not what is happening. So which is not a proper custom block name. We should give them meaningful names. Like what is that supposed to do? I didn't give them a meaningful name. I just literally set them to move slowly. But looks like it does not read those names. We are setting the portion variable to strings instead of numbers. Huh. Remove the quotes to make them numbers and for some reason it just detect it as quote. So again, not helpful. Movement issue. So the block moves slowly. Okay, just check the move slowly block and it says that it's not a standard block. So looks like this AI has no idea on what's going on with these custom blocks. So yeah, that's bad. You might want to use bait blocks. Okay, again, not helpful. Your custom blocks are defined but never call. Again, that's not what is happening. It's literally called here. So right, here's what you need to fix. Rename your custom blocks. Remove quotes from numbers. Replace move slowly with proper movement block. Add calls to your custom blocks in the main script. And these changes should make your code work as expected. So as you can see, it's really not helping you at all on debugging. So this feature, although it said it can debug programs, yeah, don't use it. So yeah, if you have any doubts on any subject of Scratch, use the Q&A feature, but don't ever use it to debug your program. So the next feature we are going to look is called Coach. So the Coach feature is a way to actually describe the project that you like to build and the AI will give you step-by-step -step instructions. No, it won't give you the code. It will just give you instructions just like ChatGPT. So for example, let's say I want to make a Puppy Bird game. Puppy, okay. <laughs> Oh, that was quick. So let's break down creating a fluffy bird game into manageable steps. And it says the basic components need a bird sprite, okay, pipes, score tracking. Okay, so first it just gives you on which sprite to pick. So let's say I want to make it move. Let's see what it does. Can it remember all our previous conversations? Okay, it can. Awesome. Let's make your bird move like in a fluffy bird game. Okay, they should fall down, fly up when spaced by spreads, and stay within screen. Okay, so this is like for beginners where it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to approach your project, which I think is really cool rather than just spitting out every code you need to do. But yeah, it's kind of slow paced. Like it's asking me questions like, dude, I'm the one who should be asking questions from you. So the last feature here is actually called Prompt Master. So what does this do? Ask you a lot of questions. I just typed it as it is. And now it will give you questions back. So movement mechanics, how would you like the sprite to move, blah, blah, blah. What's a good starting speed, all of that questions, which normally you yourself would have to decide when making the game. So this is like really helpful if you are stuck somewhere and then it just spits out some random best practices. Useless. No, here's a quick update. As I was editing this video, Stux actually got a big update. It now runs on Penguin Mod, which is basically a mod of a mod of Scratch and comes back with way more features. And I made a full video about Penguin Mod if you want to check that out later. But don't worry, almost everything I said in this video is still valid and works the same. Stux still lets you save your project as .sv3 files to your PC and now you can even save a project inside stack itself which the original version didn't allow. Super helpful. You also get access to all of Penguin Mod's awesome extensions though I recommend not using them here since the AI doesn't fully support those extensions yet and using them might prevent your project from opening in native Scratch. However, one major feature I didn't allow is the removal of the code editing feature. Why? So now it just spits out new code every time you ask it. So yeah, if any of the devs are watching, please bring that feature back. Also another small request, maybe try fixing the color issues in the prompt box. And that's a wrap. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more awesome content. And let me know in the comments what you think of Stacks. And if you like to see AI powered coding tools inbuilt into native Scratch. But just remember that AI is here to assist, not replace creativity and problem solving. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.